It reads in 2 Peter 1 to 9, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Dear brethren, I want to lovingly exhort you today, based on this scripture passage, be not forgetful. Remember, your salvation in Jesus was the beginning of a new life. Recall your salvation often and then, just as a person is born in the natural and grows through infancy to childhood to teenager to young adulthood, then becomes a full-grown adult and ages into senior years, so will be your God-ordained growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus, 2 Peter 3.18, with all of the character traits listed in 1 Peter 1, 3 to 9, growing along with you. And with your spiritual growth should come a deeper hunger for an understanding of God's word. Listen to 1 Corinthians 3, 1 and 2. Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. Today in the teaching room, we check in with the Israelites to study a critical transition for their nation. Given all that the Lord had done and the battles he had won through Joshua, would they remember? When all they would possess is God himself to lead them and guide them and grow them, would they remember? As biblical history bears out, our remembering what the Lord has done and is doing in our walk with him will determine how we grow in Him. Well, good day, beloved. It's Reverend Darren in the teaching room. Welcome to today's program. I hope you're ready to dig in and check up on those Israelites in the book of Judges. Well, beginning at Judges 2, 6, it reads, After Joshua had dismissed the Israelites, they went to take possession of the land, each to their own inheritance. The next verse says, The people served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him and who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. So after Joshua had set the people free, it's like a repeat of what happened in Joshua 24, 
29 to 31. The author of Judges simply repeats this section to explain why the angel of the Lord scolded them so harshly. At first, when the old timers were still around and remembered all the amazing supernatural events that happened in Egypt and the desert, everyone was really faithful and good. But as years passed on, a new generation came up who knew nothing of the Lord and his awesome feats on behalf of their nation. Note well here that though the Israelites inherited the land in order to truly possess it, they would have to keep their surrounding enemies from it. And we face the same challenge today in that we have the salvation of the Lord, but the flesh, the devil, and the world will constantly encroach on our spiritual vitality and growth. Listen to Jude 1, 3-5. It says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ, our only Sovereign and Lord. Though you already know all this, I want to remind you that the Lord at one time delivered his people out of Egypt, but later destroyed those who did not believe. Okay, there have always been enemies encroaching on followers of Jesus. But God does not leave us in this battle to defend ourselves. He exhorts us to remember to put on the full armor of God in this present day of evil. I encourage you to read through that passage in Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. Judges 2, 8 and 9 read, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of of 110. And they buried him in the land of his inheritance at Timnath Heres in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gaash. This is a massive turning point for Israel. God takes Joshua, an anointed, effective leader, out of Israel's sight lines. And upon the passing of each year, and the passing of those who outlived Joshua, the remembrance of the Lord and all that he had done to bring them into the promised land would fade like a summer sunset into darkness. And finally today, Judges 2.10, which reads, After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Now in these times, caves were designated as burial tombs. And as years passed on, the bones of those previously deceased would sometimes be collected and moved aside to make room for new corpses. So a whole Joshua Yahweh led generation had died and had been set aside, forgotten. A new generation, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel, rose up and, as we will soon see in the text, would usher in a dark period of Israelite history. Set in motion would be centuries-long cycles of disobedience, oppression, repentance, and deliverance and over and over again. While we will continue to follow the exciting but tragic events in this period of Israel in the Promised Land, it's important not to relegate this story 
to history only, but let it be a strong example and exhortation to us today to remember our Lord and all that he has done for us through Jesus and all that he is presently doing in the world and in us and all he has promised to do in us until the day of Christ Jesus. I'll leave you with Philippians 1.6. I love this. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ.